defines the Kharanas of the Khayal. While many believe Khayal has been the creation of the Persian and Arabic influences that came into India, a perfect replica of the form can be found in the 13th century text Sangeet Ratnakar, where it's known as the Rupa Kalapti, a form that can be further traced back to the 8th century text Sadarani Shelley. The modern day Khayal as we know it though was born in the 13th century as one of the earliest forms of synthesis between older Indian forms and newer Perso-Arabic influences. Deepak Raja is a distinguished musicologist and author of several books on Indian classical music. He helps us trace the origins of Khayal. Khayal was born around 13th, 14th century when Hazrat Amir Khosro uh, created or let's say catalyzed a fusion between older Indian forms. It remained on the sidelines because once the Mughal Empire came, Mughal Empire was a patron of the Drupad form. So from the 15th to 18th century, Khyal remained a minor form not having received the patronage of the Mughal court in Delhi. As the Mughal Empire started decaying, musicians from the Mughal entourage Delhi, Agra and Jaipur, the neighborhood, the, the basically the heart of the Mughal land. They started migrating to smaller principalities. Each of them has a, had his own way of singing Drupad. But the moment they went out of Delhi, it was Khyal that was becoming popular than the rest of the country. And their music intermingled with local musical cultures to develop a distinctive flavor. By the 18th century, as the Mughal Empire with its seat in Delhi collapsed, new kingdoms emerged, whose rulers became the new patrons of music and art. It was in towns like Rampur, Agra, Gwalior and Jaipur that Khayal flourished, taking in many of the local flavours. A lack of easy connectivity between these far-off towns also meant that musicians could develop and retain starkly individual styles that over time became stylistic lineages. These, as we know, came to be known as the Gharanas, each one founded by a genius musician and patronized by a generous king. Gharanas are generally traced back to one founder who was brilliant and original, who acquired a following. And they said, OK, this is wonderful. We want to learn this. We want to preserve this. We want to refine this. And through a process of rigorous training and indoctrination, that style was passed on from generation to generation. Initially, it started with musicians teaching their own children, which was such a natural thing to do. Then it went beyond children, because all children need not have been talented. And students came in. So to some extent, we should say that Garana's were a very beautifully defined, coherent direction. But at some stage, the truly great potential had to outgrow them and look for a larger canvas. I see the formation of a different kind of gharana now, which I call a Xerox gharana. A great original musician creates a following anytime. So I think we have a different version of gharana. The only thing is that the indoctrination process is not all that intensive as it could have been in those days. So earlier in the, in the Gharana system, there was a transmission of a process. Today we are finding transmission of a product.